it's an even greater pleasure to talk about Navilas because this is really a breakthrough in retinal laser therapy. Um, I'm Markus Kern, I'm from Ludwig Maximilians University in Munich, and I'd like to talk to you about a combination therapy with anti regf and navigated laser uh, retinal photocoagulation diabetic macular edema. Okay. Um, maybe let's have a short look back into history. Uh, when we look at the history of retinal photocoagulation, you see it's a technique which is quite old. During the 50s, Professor Meyer Schwickerath from Bonn invented laser photocoagulation, light photocoagulation. But during the ne next 20, 30 years, there was not much uh, invented on lasers improved by the sources, but not by its precision. It was still a manual procedure. In the 2000s, in the beginning of 2000s, pattern lasers arrived. They increased speed of treatment, but not precision. Only the uh, Navida system is the only system which provides a high amount of safety and accuracy, as it is the only system that provides retinal navigation, which I will show you. So, why there is a need for more sophisticated laser treatments? In macular disease, we know from diabetic macular edema that true EDTRS uh, focusing on microaneurysm has better results than just grid laser treatment. And also in other diseases such as AMD, focal treatment of CMB might uh, reduce recurrence rates, but it's very difficult to treat very close to the phobia because you always have to be cautious that you don't treat areas which you don't want to treat. In the periphery, it's the same. Why do we burn areas that are healthy? It would be better only to treat non-perfused retinal areas, but this is only possible if you have a guided treatment. And so far, there was no technique that allowed a real guided treatment. Now we have the Navila system, and therefore this will be a great advantage for the future. You saw the system already. It differs uh, significantly from conventional lasers. We don't have a slit lamp based system. We have a so-called optical head where the laser and imaging is included and the steering is done by a touch screen monitor where you can do the planning and see the live thunders of the patient and the navigated treatment. Inside of the machine, you have several imaging modalities. You can do color imaging, you can do FA, infrared imaging, and the most important, you have the digital planning feature, which allows you an integrated uh, semi-automatic eye track retinal laser treatment, as you saw before in the talk of Professor Masu Pasqua. Once again, just to show you, here we have an FA image from a patient with uh, diabetic macular edema. You can position the spot spots as you like, position them on microaneurysms wherever you want, and then integrate the planning image where you plan the treatment in the live treatment situation to see how the system tracks the eye movement and therefore we have a high precision and accuracy of the treatment. This is a patient with a um, branch vein occlusion which is quite close to the macular area. In these patients, you can use pattern laser quite close to the macula as due to the eye tracking feature, you have high precision and high safety and you don't have the risk to uh, treat the macula in areas where you don't want to treat. So um, we were quite lucky in Munich as we were able to work with the Navila system quite early. In the beginning, it was important to find out does the system what it should do and is it safe and accurate? And in our early studies, we found out we have a high precision of the system. About 96% uh, in the study were performed of the spots were within a 100 micrometer target. This is really high precision. No other system provides that. And as a positive side effect, the Damlas treatment produces less pain for the patient. Just to show you the results from the study, um, we investigated about 50 eyes and we could show we counted more than 5,000 laser spots that there is a very, very high accuracy of 96% of the spots that are placed directly close to the target of 100 micrometers. We performed OCTs to show that we only treat the areas or the, the level of the retina that we want to treat and we could show that the lesions are only limited to the outer retina and to the RPE so there is no additional damage to the photoreceptor layer or anything else. And as I said, um, the treatment with Navilas is more convenient. 
we compared 54 patients with standard laser to 54 patients who had a Navilas treatment and showed them a visual analog scatter to show how severe the pain during treatment was. And we found out there was a significant difference. Patients with standard laser had more pain. Why is this so? The laser itself is quite the same than in any other machine. But as you can do the planning, it takes less time to treat, which produces less pain. In many patients, you don't need a contact lens, and therefore, it's much more convenient for the patients. And this is an additional benefit. We all know diabetes patients are very incomplete in somehow, and if you can uh, provide them uh, easier, less painful treatment, they easier agree into the treatment. So, more important than accuracy by its own is does this new te technique result in better visual outcomes? We investigated, we took about 120 patients from conventional laser and compared them to 45 patients with navigated laser. The thing is, it's always very difficult to compare pears and apples. So um, we used a special technique, it's called prospensity score matching, which allows you to bring both groups more together to get them in the same shape so that they are easier to compare. So in this study, we found out that in general, patients with Navilas treated um, get more laser spots. Why is this so? Because you have the opportunity, the possibility to see FA images, to plan exactly where you want to treat. You can do a full and comprehensive treatment, and this might result in less retreatments. In addition, we found out that this might provide better visual outcomes. When we compared these 119 patients with conventional laser, these patients here with the Navilas treated group, we saw Navilas patients gain earlier vision than patients who had conventional laser, and in the end they had a significant better outcome. I said those patients that were treated with Navilas had placed more spots, but even when you match the groups for um, the number of spots, so both groups had the same number of spots, patients <coughs> with Navilas gain earlier vision than after conventional laser, and the outcome is easily better. An additional advantage due to the more comprehensiveness of the treatment, we need less retreatments. In our study, we found during eight months of treatment, there was almost a 50% reduction of retreatment rate in those patients who had navigated retinal laser therapy. So, as already said, laser was for many, many years the gold standard in diabetic macular edema treatment. During the last years, anti-VEGF has become more and more important as we have now the opportunity with the injections to improve vision in the beginning. Big studies from the US like Restore or ERCR Network demonstrated clearly that we can increase the vision six to nine letters from baseline. However, we need a number of injections, about seven to 12 per year. Seven to 12 injections per year, it means a lot of money we have to spend on those patients. And it's not very easy for the patients always to come back to the hospital to get their injections. So we wanted to investigate or evaluate whether the current standard of care in phobia involving diabetic macular edema, anti vegf treatment, um, uh, and a combination with the navigated laser treatment might improve the outcome and might extend the injection-free period while maintaining the visual outcome. So what did we do? We recruited patients from our diabetic macular edema clinic in Munich. We made two cohorts which uh, were randomly um, defined by attending physicians. In one group, we did a conventional standard anti-VHF treatment. In Germany, we have a special situation that we have a reimbursement of three initial monthly Lucentis injections, and then there's a re-evaluation and a um, Grorenata treatment is recommended. In the second treatment, we did these three Lucentis treatments in the beginning, then did a navigated laser treatment, and then we looked at the difference in the outcome and the need of injections. What was the intention of the study? We all know 
with anti VEGF, we get a fast reduction of macular edema. However, it needs more and more injections to maintain the stabilization. We thought if we put a navigated laser on the now reduced thickened retina, might help to stabilize the, the macular edema and improve outcome. First, let me say in some how this works. Here's a patient example. You see a more diffuse type of macular edema. He got his first injection. You see the reduction of macular edema, decrease of vision, second injection, third injections. Then we performed the navigated retinal laser treatment, and then we waited. After three months, no more injections were done in between. Vision stabilized, even more macular edema remained flat. And even after nine months, after laser treatment, 12 months after beginning of treatment, situation was stable without an additional anti <coughs> treatment during that time. So um, we tried to evaluate that a little bit more systematically. We uh, did three groups. On one hand, we have the standard treatment, where the patients got their, uh, only their anti-VHF injections. The second group, we <coughs> did, uh, after three injections, uh, focal navigated laser treatment. And in the fourth group, we focused more on the sickness of the retina. We said we treat after 450 micron only. That was mainly after three or four months. So um, when we do look at the main characteristics, they were quite similar in all groups. When we look at the outcome and the early development in the Nabilas group combined treatment, we see after the, after the three injections, we have a fast increase in visual acuity, but even after laser treatment and no more additional injections, we could maintain visual acuity increase. The same with central retinal sickness. After the first injections, the retina sickness decreases. However, after retinal laser treatment, no more injections, the retina sickness remains stable. So, when we look at the visual outcome, there was no significant difference in uh, all the three groups. However, there was a trend to a better visual outcome in the combined treatment arms. But uh, the main, main result of the study was there was a significant difference of needed injections um, in the three groups. Those patients who had only anti vegf treatment needed during 12 months of treatment 5.2 plus minus 3.2 injections per year. In the combined treatment arms, both groups needed less than one injection in addition to the three initial injections. Uh, more in detail is the results. Um, visual acuity was in all three groups pretty similar and comparable to the big studies Restore and Bright. However, uh, the number of injections needed was significantly lower in the navigated combined laser groups compared to the only uh, injected groups. So let me conclude. Um, using our protocol with three initial anti vegf injections followed by a navigated laser resulted in similar visual outcome compared to the large studies from anti vegf treatment like uh, Restore and Drive. However, navigated laser helped to reduce the number of injections needed and less than one injection needed over one year after laser treatment in our group. So this is uh, only a very a smaller group of patients. We, go, uh, we are going on to evaluate that, but we think this is a very important thing for the future, which helps to improve visual outcomes and uh, helps reduce burden for our healthcare systems due to the need of injections. So thank you very much.